Good morning, folks. The active region has departed and it's now a very quiet Earth-facing half of our star. We've got news above and below the ground and into deep space, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star, dominated by small coronal holes. The solar flaring is flatlined with the departure of the sunspots. The solar wind remains slightly elevated, but at somewhat calmer fluctuations. The slow intensification over days has elevated the KP, but not even out of the green. The coronal holes facing Earth now will offer more elevated intensity solar wind. Still nothing scary. The earthquake watch, however, is on the rise because of them. Let's start beneath our feet and then explosively re-emerge at Popo. Second time the great Mexican volcano has puffed in a week. Let's also share the spring flood outlook, and it's exactly what 2011 looked like. If you're brand new here, we've been watching the same setup that 2011 had occurring in the atmosphere and major oscillations could deliver a similar spring to the United States. New shot of Jupiter here from the Juno cam. Awesome features, including some Kelvin Helmholtz instabilities, which we do see on Earth sometimes. Serendipitously, I caught this one across the southern Albuquerque horizon just yesterday. You may also recognize the same type of fluid dynamics in fluid, like the ocean. Very cool release from TESS up next. The newest exoplanet hunter has diagnosed which stars are excellent candidates for large planets, Earth-like planets, and even which it will search for planets as small as Mars. TESS about to go ham. Interesting piece linked for you from Archive on interplanetary magnetic fields connecting the Sun to the planets. This is what some of the smaller ones look like, and for those into this subject, link is there below the video. Good read. There's a fascinating article out about long-term carbon processes and how the volcanic release so wildly dwarfs the lithospheric takedown into the mantle. The article goes into key sources of carbon that generally get forgotten in most climate discussions. Last but not least, the tracing of magnetic fields from density returns in the deep cosmos and at enormous scale. How enormous? Well, our planet orbits a star orbiting a galaxy which is part of a cluster of galaxies, and between our cluster of galaxies and others lie incredible magnetic fields. It is those magnetic fields and plasma turbulence that drive star and even galaxy formation and the filament shapes. It's not gravity. And those were the huge news out of Sophia, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, and SLAC last year. Plasma Universe is coming. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.